debate tonight? Huh? 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 I'm looking right at you, the guy who's not applauding. Are you ready for your next debate tonight? I gotta individually pick out people to be into the show. That's not a good sign. Uh, I'm very happy to bring up this next comedian. Uh, well, I should tell you what the debate is first. Our next debate is James Brown versus Charlie Brown, you guys. That is our <laughs> next debate this evening. On the side of James Brown, uh, this guy is visiting us all the way from Los Angeles, California. He's performed at the South by Southwest and at the prestigious Montreal Just for Laughs Comedy Festival. Please put your hands together for Mr. Carl Hess, everybody. Let's hear it for Carl. <laughs> And on the side of Charlie Brown, I can't believe we got this guy to defend Charlie Brown. All the way from the Peanuts comic strip, please put your hands together for Franklin, everybody. Franklin from the Peanuts. Your head's looking a little bit smaller than usual, Franklin. Uh, going first on the side of James Brown, Carl Hess. Guys, on the surface, this is a debate about a great American musical icon versus someone pretending to be a comic book character in a bar. <laughs> but don't let that fool you. What this really is, is a debate about the American dream. <laughs> James Brown is the embodiment of the American dream. Someone from hard scrabble beginnings who pulled himself up by his very fashionable bootstraps and became one of the coolest people of all time. Charlie Brown was born to a life of privilege with a silver spoon in his mouth and a white suburban existence and all he could do was complain. <laughs> Charlie Brown grew up in a white neighborhood in Minnesota with loving parents, good schools, and solid friends. James Brown grew up in the South Poor black in the 1940s. <laughs> Choose your own adventure, motherfuckers. <laughs> Charlie Brown, he had to deal with his parents going wah, 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 wah in his house. James Brown lived in his aunt's brothel until he was 15. He had to deal with people fucking in the next room. <laughs> Do you want to hear wah, wah, wah or someone fucking a whore? <laughs> Ask yourself that. James Brown went to prison when he was 16 because he was a street hustler. His parents didn't provide for him. He had to provide for himself. When he got out, he joined a gospel group. How long do you think Charlie Brown would last on the inside? Tell me that. <laughs> Tell me that. You know, you know, also, you know that wah, wah, wah sound? That was Charlie's parents trying to give him love and support. Did he want to hear it? No, not at all. <laughs> he had good friends. Friends who tried to help him, tried to help his baseball team, tried to help him kick a football. Supportive friends. He had fucking free psychiatric advice. Well, it was five cents, but that's basically free. <laughs> James Brown couldn't count on his friends. Like that time in 1971 where he looks over at his bass player, Bootsy Collins, during a concert. He's fucking high on acid. <laughs> Charlie Brown never dealt with shit like that, I'll tell you that. Of course, now we come to the sad, sad chapter of James Brown's drug problems. Now clearly he's had a lot harder life than Charlie, and sometimes that leads to you turning to PCP. <laughs> but I always say, if you're gonna smoke angel dust, have fun with it, guys. That's what I say. <laughs> Did James Brown do that? Well, I'll tell you a story, then you answer my question. Uh, at one point, James Brown was arrested for attacking an electric company employee that had come to his house with a steak knife while he was high on PCP. The authorities found out there was no electrical problem at the Brown household. That means he called the electric company specifically to attack someone with a steak knife on PCP. That's called having fun with it. Now, both of these characters are icons. We come to the question of their legacy. Do you guys like hip hop? Whitest room in Denver? <laughs> you know who's the most sampled hip hop sample of all time? James Brown. Do you guys like the movie The Blues Brothers? 
You remember that church scene? That was James Brown, guys. If you didn't know, he was the preacher. Also, that one guy does a backflip, and it's pretty fucking cool. <laughs> James Brown has multiple nicknames. Does Charlie Brown have a nickname? I don't think so. Someone yell it out if he has one. Exactly. James Brown, Mr. Dynamite, soul brother number one. Hardest working man in showbiz. Godfather, that's four right there. I could keep going. I always judge a man by the amount of nicknames that he has given himself. That's just me. That might just be me, guys. We all know James Brown is soul brother number one. I did some, I did some math for this show. It turns out that if you do the math, Charlie Brown is soul brother 4,837,365. The numbers don't lie, guys. The numbers don't lie. I'd like to end. Uh, I feel like I would be remiss if I didn't use the master's own words to describe his plight and his legacy. So I would like to end with an excerpt from a CNN interview that James Brown gave in 1983 that he decided it would be pretty fun to smoke some PCP beforehand, again, having fun with it. The interviewer asked him, James, why do the ladies like you so much? And he said, because I look good. Because I smell good. Because I make love good. That was the best CNN interview ever given of all time. James Brown, soul brother number one. What's up, guys? Yo, man, let me tell you about my boy Chuck, all right? My boy, all right, real, like, real talk, man. My boy Charlie, like, he's a good dude. You know what I mean? He showed me love when no one else would. You know what I mean? He was a good guy. He cared about everybody, even Pigpen. kind of hard to be around pig pen, you know what I mean? <laughs> Parentheses of funk everywhere, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but Charlie was cool, man. He stood there. He, he was friends with him. Every day, he stuck by his side, man. That's how Charlie was. He was a good dude. You don't hear about none of James Brown friends. Name one. <laughs> Bet you can name about five of Charlie's. You know what I mean? Everybody loves Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown ain't put his dog on. I love that dog. Snoopy was the man. You know what I mean? He gave me fresh snow cones every day. <laughs> Y'all don't understand. <laughs> Charlie's the fucking man, yeah? Y'all don't know. See, he came up immediately talking about, yeah, James Brown, soul brother number one, hardest working man, blah, 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 blah. He had to come up with all them nicknames. Charlie Brown never needed a nickname. He never needed a nickname. Hell, every cartoon you ever see Charlie Brown in, they put his name on that motherfucker. That's how dope his name is. That's how solid of a man he is. <laughs> you ain't never seen a James Brown Christmas. <laughs> Just thought of that. This is it. <laughs> Saying, man, Charlie Brown was that dude. I only seen him uh, only have a bad attitude one time. It was, uh, you know, a couple years ago, it was Linus. 
You know what I mean? Him and Lion is bullshit. You know, playing around, joking with each other. And then uh, Charlie said something to the fact of uh, Linus was a pussy. Because <laughs> he still believed in huge pumpkins walking around. And Linus was like, whatever. I did your sister in that pumpkin patch. <laughs> Franklin made some solid points. <laughs> solid points for a character that wasn't introduced to Peanuts until 1968. <laughs> after Schultz received multiple letters asking why there wasn't a black character on the show. Yeah, I was back there on Wikipedia. What about it? <laughs> so not only is Franklin the product of Schultz's white guilt by not having an original black character... <laughs> He's also poorly drawn. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> oh, James Brown didn't have any friends. Try Michael Jackson. Wouldn't you like to be best friend? Well, that's actually probably a bad example. Um, think of someone cool. James Brown was friends with those people. Also, yeah, you've never heard of a James Brown Christmas. Why? Because it's called Funky Christmas, and it's a seminal holiday album. He took Christmas, he made it funky, and then presumably, he smoked some PCP. <laughs> that sounds like the funkiest goddamn Christmas I've ever heard of. <laughs> I'll end simply by saying this. In the wise words of James Brown, it's a man's man. And you, Charlie Brown, have been a boy since 19-fucking-50. Charlie Brown Kwanzaa's cause Schultz died. <laughs> That's so stupid. <laughs> it was cute what he did with the cape earlier, cause that's James Brown's thing. Ooh. You got a cape. You must be the man. You know who else had a cape? Charlie Brown's dog. <laughs> and he was a pilot. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody care about James Brown's moves and all that. Apparently, y'all ain't never seen Charlie Brown cartoon. Because when Schroeder started getting down on the piano, all of us do at least one of James Brown moves every single time. And we don't have to switch because we do that one that awesome. You know what I'm saying? That's <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. Ladies and gentlemen, Charlie Brown is an icon. An icon, ladies and gentlemen, Macy Day Parade, his dog, him and his friends float <laughs> through the largest city in the U.S. The only time James Brown floated was a whole different kind of blow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm laughing way harder than this than I should. Um... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, basically, uh, what I'm trying to tell you is, uh, I'm pretty high right now. <laughs> I'm really fucking high right now. 
And you know what? Most of y'all don't know about Franklin. <laughs> James Brown got high a lot. And everybody know he got high a lot. And it didn't help shit. He's the, how are you gonna be the only person in music who drugs didn't help their career? <laughs> <laughs> so fuck James Brown. <laughs> All right, double mic drop, you guys. First time in show history. We had a double mic drop. And if you guys are keeping score at home, we had a phantom mic drop at the beginning of the show. So a lot of, lot of mic drop. You're high right now, Franklin, huh? Now I know why you wanted to get to the pumpkin patch so bad. Huh, guys? Come on. All right, we have to pick a winner. Uh, if you're on the side of James Brown, please put your hands together for Carl Hess, you guys. Let's hear it for Carl. You're in James Brown. And if you're on the side of Charlie Brown, please, nice round of applause for Franklin, you guys. If you're on the side. There you have it. Charlie Brown's the winner in the whitest room in Denver, you guys. Nice round of applause for Carl Hess, all the way from L.A., and Franklin, all the way out of the funnies, you guys. He came